Welcome back. Welcome back. Now, I have another guest in the house, and we're going to be talking politics. Now, 2014 might actually be the year for the general elections, going by calculations, in my hold in December or January 2015. But yeah, we're going to, this year, of course, is going to be a year for politicking. And I have here with me Mustafa Ahmed, political social commentator. Oh, wow. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining a us. A big pleasure. Now, we were talking on the internet before you came on with the last guest, and I just want to go on with that now. How much of a uh, role do you think social media is going to play this year, seeing as the general elections are around the corner? In 2014, the yes. social media, oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, in particular. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping you were going to bring that on last, but, you know, um, Twitter has been revolutionary in Nigerian politics. We've seen um, um, so many people come up on Twitter and, um, you know, um, change the face at which um, young people look at politics. You know, we've seen um, participation like never before from um, young people in politics via Twitter, via Facebook. But, you know, particularly just on Twitter, if you get onto the internet space, you'll find out that there's so much of um, ideas that young people are pushing out there, you know. And I think um, social media is going to play a very key role um, in determining the future of Nigerian politics, particularly in this year 2014 i think so and people always say that when elections come around ele politicians tend to be nicer and open and more accessible <laughs> at this point i remember before the 2011 elections president jonathan was super active on facebook and he yes. was termed the guy who brought facebook to nigeria by a certain minister do you think i mean he doesn't tweet he has people who does that you know his advices yeah. and all of that do you think it's going to get to a point where maybe towards the middle of this year where all of them the president and governor suddenly become very active and engage all of us okay yeah um I don't expect Mr. President to um, come on Twitter. If he wanted to do that, he would have done that, you know, um, long before now. And he has um, a media team and, you know, they're doing a good job. Um, I think he's going to stay with that, um, take himself away from public directly and, um, you know, use his uh, media guys to um, interact with Nigerians via Twitter. Um, after elections, he has not been too active on Facebook, uh, like you said. So I think... Um, that was just the media stunt at the time. I don't think he's going to, you know, do something like that. He's done it in 2011. It worked um, in 2015. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you're not going to buy it if you happen. No, 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 no I, I, I don't think anybody's <laughs> going to do that. No. Something also that, that shaped uh, 2011 was the... People took social media seriously during the elections in particular. Yeah. People were tweeting from their polling stations. Station. Pictures were being taken. There was this RSVP campaign that started by Enough is Enough Nigeria. You know, it was a big thing. How much further can we take it this year? Emika, it will surprise you to understand that um, the elections in 20... If they hold in December or in January, whenever, um, you're going to see a have a of activity on social media because right now, in 2011, not very many people... Um, forget the uh, amount that we think we saw, you know, it's going to be a joke compared to what we're going to see um, this time around because everybody now is on social media, either you're on Facebook or you're on Twitter or you're on MySpace, you're somewhere, you know, uh, I, everybody wants to, to be heard. And people right now understand that you can have election results uh, posted, posted on the internet right from where you are. Yeah. And from 2011 to 2014, you know, uh, mobile phone users have experienced Blue dead, yeah. you know. Especially smartphones. Yes, yeah, smartphone users with this Android phones available now at affordable prices. Everybody, every almost everybody has an Android phone or a Blackberry, you know, that can help them access um, social media space. And it's going to be um, huge in 2014 or maybe January 2015, whenever yeah. the election is hold. Let's leave the internet now. Um, I remember uh, the most recent elections that was held was the Anambra State election, which yeah. was sadly a mess. <laughs> I mean, we had the election postponed and you know, it was inconclusive and it finally finished and now we're going to have all of these court cases. It was just one state, one of the smallest states in this country hmm. to navigate. I mean, why was that so bad and doesn't that make you worry for 2014 or 15? Um, okay, INEC had um, the Anambra elections as a litmus test, yes. which sadly, they failed. Now, they've got um, the elections in um, Ekiti. Yeah, and coming Oshun, up. You know, to try and um, prove to us Nigerians that what happened in Anambra was a one-off. And it's not going to be like that. They've got to change something, you know. Um, I think one of the things that's going to revolutionize Nigeria in 2014 is the issue of voters' registration. Because I remember, uh, towards the Anambra election, um, Atari Rijiga came and said that I, I didn't have enough money to register new voters, and so they're going to stick to the old register. And in a number, you would um, agree with that. So people found their names missing on that um, uh, register. So I'm wondering, between now and when the elections in 
Oshun and Ekiti hold, if something is going to give way, you know, they're going to have to uh, get their acts together because they have, okay, well, they have two elections to prove to us that what happened in the number was, you know, a fluke and it's not going to happen again. Otherwise, uh, the 20, 2014 or 2015 elections, general elections, wow, I don't know how they're <laughs> going to cope with that. You know, like you said, Anambra is part of the smallest states in this country. Yeah. And if they couldn't, they had all their manpower in Anambra. If they couldn't handle it and it became such a mess, you know, um, election results trickling in two, three days after elections, inconclusive and stuff like that. And like you said, now we're going to have all these litigations and court yeah. cases and so I'm um, Personally, I'm worried for uh, 2014. But hopefully, they can get their acts together using the Oshun and Ekiti elections as a, uh, a practice. Yeah. We can't talk about the general elections without mentioning Bor uh, Borno, Yobe, and Adamawa states, where the state of emergency has been on and has been extended. What do you think is going to happen with those states with the elections really coming up? Um, I think it's... Okay, um, the general elections are still maybe... 11 months away. Yeah. I want to believe that, um, you know, the president has uh, delegated so much into curbing this um, uh, Boko Haram menace. And I, as a Nigerian, I want to believe that he's going to succeed in that. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> uh, elections down there are going to be you know, super hectic, you know, because uh, voter intimidation and disenfranchisement of voters and stuff like that definitely are going to occur in those um, three key states, yeah. and these are strongholds for the opposition. So how are you going to navigate that? I I strongly believe that um, something something good is going to happen between now and um, December two thousand and fourteen or January two thousand and fifteen to make sure that elections hold in those states, you know, peacefully. Hopefully. I wonder if elections do not hold there. What does that have to? What how does that affect the general picture? If it comes to a stage where we can't have elections, have elections in those three in states. Those three states. Ah, then there's no general election. The elections are not general. Uh, you cannot um, disenfranchise three states. three states and expect to uh, call it general elections. It doesn't. It doesn't happen that way. You know, it's like hosting the World Cup without Africa in it. it it's not the World Cup anymore. That's going to be very interesting to watch. Um, <laughs> let's move on now to someone who is has been in, was in the news a lot last year and going forward has sort of affected the dynamics of the political parties in this country today. Bamanga Tuko, he's the chairman of the PDP. Because he became the chairman, all of this infighting started and people have left the ruling party and the landscape has completely changed. changed. What do you think is going to happen with him in particular? Because people are saying he has to be sacrificed for the PDP to still remain one. The two of the seven rebel governors who didn't move to the APC are there only if he leaves. What is going to happen with him? Um, I strongly believe that um, the ruling party, the People's Democratic Party, is... Um, Slightly beyond redemption, you know. Um, we've seen this happen before, where towards elections, there are infightings, and somehow, 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 they navigate their way, meander and twist things and turn things and settle it, you know. But never has it been this bad. Uh, we have five governors moving uh, for the seven House of Rep members, you know, leaving the ruling party and moving to the opposition, you know. Uh, so much um, cross carpeting is going on right now. It's, um, impressive. it's crazy how many people are. Like every day you put on the news, there's about and then there's, people there's moving. somebody moving, you know, from, from the PDP to the APC. And sincerely, uh, even right now, sacrificing Bumanga Tuko will not, I repeat, will not sort. You think it's too late? No, it, 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 it's a bit too late. They left it this time just a little too late, you know. Um, somehow, before now, the leadership of the PDP had a mechanism of nipping trouble in the board. This time around, they lost it, and it's a bit too late right now. And um, I don't see a way back. You know, L letting the manga Tuko go will uh, amend things, but then it doesn't change much, not anymore. But is it really APC's game, though? Seeing as all of these strange bedfellows are suddenly in this party, you know, people who were sworn enemies in the past are suddenly have to go, go and hug and kiss. Uh, uh, let's take Keno for example. Shekara and Konka are suddenly supposed to be party. <laughs> Uh, how, 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 what is this going to do for the APC as well? Well, that's politics. In politics, they say there's no permanent enemy, there's no permanent friend, just um, permanent al allegiances, you know. Once your interests are aligned, you know, it works. But I think it would be a very big mistake to think that um, all is well with the APC because um, you have a lot of movement from the PDP to the APC. And one smart thing that the APC has done has been to delay registration of members, you know. There's no um, issue of 
oh, I got into this party before you, and that gives me um, an edge over you. Know, they've allowed this, and you know, everybody's going to register at the same time. At the same time, so everybody who is a member of the APC is going to come on board at about the same time. So there's no uh, hierarchy yes. whatsoever. But then, as smart as that is, the problem I have with that is, you know, um, a lot of people are expecting that it's business as usual, but it's not going to be simply because. I'm sure the PDP knows this, and they're just waiting, you know, for when it comes to selection of candidates or people for various um, positions. And they're still going to be. I will, it will be a miracle if the APC is able to work this out without a major catastrophe on their hands, because there's so much. Uh, way too many interests. Wait, way too many. Interest. There's so much interest right now. And there's no way. Well, I don't know, but I personally, I don't see a way where their interest would eventually not clash. Yeah. You know. Uh, let me predict that there's going to be movement from the APC back back to the PDP. It's interesting you say that because even the I think the chairman of the PDP even said that at some point that some of them are going to have to come back. Obviously, and when why why that is interesting for me, sorry, is because the major parties that formed the APC, the ACN, yes, the and CPC, the and of course the MPP, sort of have a tradition of picking candidates, yeah. unanimously or not. They're, they're not a primary-based party, mm -hmm. or they were not primary-based parties. This is going to definitely going to be a problem, especially with people from the PDP who are used to having primaries and used to having their voices heard as against being dictated to by one person. What do you think they're going to have primaries first of all for their presidential candidate? Because people think they're not, but they're not going to do that. Uh, and how would that affect everything? It has not been the tradition of the uh, founding yeah, parties, parties of APC to have uh, primary elections. Primary elections was something that um, you know is synonymous with the PDP, like you rightly pointed out. And um, I think uh, it's going to be an issue this time because there are so many power players in the APC right now. And one of the biggest decisions is to decide a unanimous candidate who is going to be acceptable right, to all. You know, it's going to be by majority. Yes, it's okay by majority. It's going to be a major brainstormer for the leadership of the, of the APC to pick one person who most people are going to be, you know, satisfied with. And um, somehow, somehow, I think this time around, they just might buy the idea of a primary elections, you know, just to satisfy, you know, everybody. And, yeah. you know. Do you think President Jonathan is going to run? He hasn't said so. <laughs> uh, not, not verbatim, but um, his body language tells it all. You know, the, the, there's so much game, um, politicking, and hustling and shuffling being done, you know. It's, um, it will be a loss to the opposition if he doesn't run. Because uh, right now... Most of the cards are because he, he run. Because he's going to run, yes. you know. The APC sees um, the Jonathan candidacy as very unpopular. Not the PDP. You know, a lot of their effort has been focused on the inactivity of the president. Not the PDP. Now, so if the PDP uh, somehow, you know, miraculously works this out and get uh, the president not to co not to recontest you know there have been rumors that he signed an agreement not to contest you know there was the passenger letter and stuff and stuff and stuff somehow if they work this out and he does not contest it's going to be trouble you know for for the apc to deal with that'll be very interesting to see wow <laughs> well um okay just one final one now of course is the apc as well and i want to talk about aminu tambo who's the speaker of the house of representatives who's sort of floating he hasn't said anything he's a member of the pdp of course yes but the state governor was one of those who moved to the apc he's sort of been his allegiance for the most part in the last year of course has been with members of the apc who's he's sort of been hobnobbing with do you think he's going to declare this year for the APC. And do you think he might actually be the presidential candidate that most people have said? Uh, I mean, somebody's an interesting fellow. You know, he said something that um, struck me. Um, like you said, he has been... Um, sort of flirting. Flirting with the APC. And I think at the point, the leader of the PDP questioned him, and he said to them, he said, I'm the speaker for Nigeria, not the speaker of the PDP. So he has every right to move with governors who are not members of the PDP. Of the PDP true. Which is true. You know, so... Um, like like you said, uh, he's floating, but it's not floating per se. He's with the PDP. We yes, know he has definitely. not declared himself uh, with the APC just yet, uh, but I think he's going to do that eventually. I I strongly believe that uh, it's just a question of time. He's just waiting for the right time to make um, the right move. You know, in politics, most things are about uh, we know what you're going to do. Yeah, it's just like asking me right. if the president is going to contest. 
definitely, I have a 99% belief that he's going to contest. Maybe he's just waiting for the right time to announce his candidacy. So, same thing with Aminu Tambo. I think he's most definitely going to declare for the APC, but it's just a question of time. When is the right time to strike that chord? That's what he's waiting for. Hmm. It's going to be a very interesting year. I'm actually very looking forward to it. I can't wait for all of the politicking to, you know, kick off in full gear. Thank you very much, Mustafa, for joining us. When we'll come back, we'll be looking at more, of course, topics to look forward to in 2014. Please do stay with us.